Good morning. It's my great uh, pleasure and really excitement to be able to, uh, to open this next module of this course on applying applied category theory to system science and functional programming and uh, software development. Uh, the reason for my excitement lies in the fact that uh, we're about to broach a topic which has uh, tremendously uh, uh, empowering uh, potential within the spheres of both uh, software engineering and, and functional programming on the one hand, and system science and dynamical systems on the other. The topic is, is that of profunctors. And profunctors will provide us uh, this avenue for reasoning about making a B out of an A, or getting from an A to a B that is going to end up providing great insight in the area of dynamical systems. And at the same time, providing the most practical of tools in the context of, of functional programming and software engineering. Compositional tools that allow us to operate in complex, often multi-level data structures in ways that can then be easily composed together, strung together into ever more powerful, uh, consistent uh, uh, operations to allow us to, to achieve in an economy of expression, uh, tremendous uh, flexibility in manipulating these, these data structures uh, that are the hallmark of modern complex software engineering. It will also provide us a, a rich way of reasoning about resource theories, about making Bs from As uh, that will extend to many areas of, of planning and reasoning about cost and reasoning about feasibility, reasoning about how to make one thing given another. Um, uh, reflecting the, the sort of keystone aspects of this work, um, uh, we're going to be uh, approaching a topic which provides us this, this, this great flexibility in, in covering additional topics when considered together with its supporting material. Uh, the green is what we've covered already in this course, and we're going to be taking on these, these blue items. Um, Profunctors provide this gateway into these topics for software engineering with optics, uh, in particular profunctor uh, optics. Uh, but also these mechanisms for, for reasoning graphically about systems, um, uh, building on, on basic understanding from pre-orders and monoids, going on to issues with uh, symmetric monoidal categories. And, and their depiction is wiring diagrams, reasoning about wayfinding and feasibility and resource theories and making a B from an A. Um, and, and then we'll end up discovering that many practical questions uh, can, can then be um, uh, traced down to sort of generalizations of things that are very familiar to us, things like matrix multiplication. And when we come to applications of these ideas to dynamical systems, recognizing the fact that dynamical systems are generalized lenses, we'll see that uh, in this context, uh, we're gonna be able to reason using sort of matrix uh, characterizations for the, how the behaviors of even nonlinear systems combine. Elements of the equilibria point or fixed points, uh, critical points of those systems combine, et cetera. Um, so we're opening up a whole new world by dealing with this material on profunctors. And today's lecture, we're going to be talking about some basic elements of that that will build on our understanding uh, that was put into place uh, in, in, in the area of functors and contravariant functors as well. Uh, but we'll then go on to discussion of preorders and monoidal um, and monoids and monoidal preorders and, and build on it towards uh, an understanding of monoidal. Of, of monoidal categories. Okay, so let's dive into some of this material. Um, so we're building on material covered in 
in these uh, lectures by uh, Bartosz Miluski and, and Brendan Fong. Um, and we're leading up to these uh, down here as part of the 2019 Applied Category Theory course at MIT. Within this sphere, profunctors are going to um, be seen as operating, as, as offering summaries of sorts of, that can be seen through, through many interpretive lenses or metaphorical lenses. They provide a set of proof relevant relations between an object A and an object B in another category, for example, potentially in another category or a bridge between categories, um, a way of getting from an A to a B. Um, they help us reason about ways of getting from an A to a B or how much it costs to get from an A to B or whether it's possible to get from an A to a B, but can be also seen as ways of turning an A into a B. Um, uh, in, in ways of making a B from the A. Uh, most of these, you'll notice, uh, the wayfinding analogies, the ways of making, emphasize the fact here that A is, is kind of the starting point. It's what's consumed, it's what's needed, and B is what's produced. And that will make all the difference in the world in terms of covariance, contravariance. Profunctors make use of um, th these uh, contravariant covariant distinction in ways that um, in the case of the Hom profunctor will lead very neatly to, to pre-composition with one, with one function and post-composition with another, or pre-composition with one morphism, post-composition with another. Um, and they'll generalize then um, both uh, covariant and contravariant functors, putting them each in their place, one serving uh, on one side of the profunctor and another. Profunctors at a, at a most basic level can be thought of as, or as, at a most um, um, formal level, can be thought as a mapping from a product category of two categories. So the product category is product of category C op, opposite, and all the morphism flip, and another category D, and the profunctor maps it into set, or in general, it maps into V categories, where V is most nicely a quantal. And uh, we'll be seeing that when it comes to cost profunctors or bull profunctors uh, as well. Um, and more, more intuitively, though, we can think, uh, if we think of the profunctor as a bridge or a way of getting from an A to B, we could think of it as uniting these two categories where. Category C is mapped into D, and where the nature of this mapping might be labeled with sets, or it might be labeled uh, with um, elements of, a, of another category, like a V category. And a home profunctors map from C to C. Um, this sort of notation will clue us into the desirability of what we call the collage of the profunctor which shows how it maps from an A, from a C to a D. And where this opposite, which may seem kind of clumsy and arbitrary, actually ends up falling out of our classic way of, of reasoning about how to get from, an, from one place to another. Okay, so you know, within this context, um, I'd like to, to first go back to basics and remind you of the uh, essential, uh, uh, essential components um, of mapping um, with functors, okay? Um, so uh, within the context of uh, func functors, we saw how uh, functors map objects to objects. So it might map an object uh, B to an object, to an object, uh, maybe a B, uh, or uh, an object B prime into maybe a B prime. But functors do more than mapping, to engage in mapping of objects, they map morphisms. And uh, within the context of mapping morphisms, we speak about them lifting morphisms, like lifting a G to lifting, uh, lifting it from going from object B to B prime to instead go from a maybe a B to a maybe a free prime. This is a generalization of G 
to operate on maybes, as it were. Now, in the case of maybe, we're clearly operating in, in a programming category, and here G is a function, sorts of morphisms we have in, say, Hask, um, and the category of types and functions between them. And we lift that to be a function from a maybe a B to a maybe, uh, to a maybe a B prime. In this case, the lifted version just kind of applies G. If there is a B in here, we apply G to it. If there ain't, there's nothing to apply it to, we return a nothing. With list, it was a similar thing. We had this, um, we had this morphism, which we could lift here. In general, for, for Hask, this is a function. And so we lift this function from B to B prime to get a function that goes from list to B to list to B prime. In, the, in Paolo Peron, these words, we're, we're providing a generalization of G to operate on lists. And functors allow us to do that automatically uh, for, for an arbitrary function G. And the operation on this kind of makes sense. Um, just as with maybe, if we had a B, we hit it with G to get a B prime. With a list, we have zero or more Bs. And we just hit each of them with G. Uh, G. We have the Bs in hand, and we hit them with G to get a B prime, or to get the corresponding B primes. So um, maybe here, B is int, and B prime is bool. And we have a list of ints and a list of bools. And given these, each element of this list of ints, we just hit it with this mapping from int to bool. And one by one, they go. Um, and we get a list of bools out, each just processed with G, right? Very intuitive notion. Uh, somewhat more subtle was this case where we had a, a function which returned the type variable here, b. And so we call this a reader of b. It takes an environment variable and it turns a, turns a b. And not, not that the type variable here is the value return. It's the thing we get resulting from the function. We have it in hand. Once we give an environment variable to this, we have it something we can do something with. Um, and therefore, if we wanted to implement something that went from an environment variable to a B prime, well, how can we implement this? Well, look, I mean, giving a, getting an environment variable, that's, that's taking an environment variable in, um, so we need that to do our job. And, and if that's given to us, what can we do with it? Well, we need a B prime. Where can we get a B prime from? Um, uh, we're just given this environment variable. We're giving something that goes from B to B prime. Um, so maybe we need to return a bool and G goes from int to bool. How are we going to return a bool? Where can we conjure up a bool from? Well, well this isn't the only thing we have. Um, Got to get a bool from somewhere. We have this thing over here, but there's other function that, that we have that we want to lift. Um, uh, using our, our fmap um, for defining fmap. This is a thing we have. And if we give it an E, we can get back, well, we won't get it back a bool, but we'll get back an int. Mm, we'll get back an int. Um, that ain't a bool, but we know how to turn an int into a bool using G. So here we want to take something that takes environment, get a bool. What we can do to get our bool is take this environment, give it to this one, get back an end, and then we can map the end to a bool using G. And so here we post compose this function um, uh, with G, okay? Um, so in other words, we perform, uh, in order to implement this function, um, we basically use this function first, and then we hit it with G second. So we post compose it with, with G, okay? Um, uh, so in this case, um, uh, we are 
post composing with G after we perform this. Um, uh, so let's go to generalize this in general with a covariant functor. We have a B, uh, we have a function mapping from B to B prime. We have something that has Bs, a list of them, a maybe of them, uh, a thing that produces them here. Uh, and what we want to do is, uh, is produce something that instead produces a, a B prime. And so we just map it in the same way. If we have something that goes, uh, uh, a morphism goes from a B to a B prime, we want to map some, uh, a functor of B to a functor of B time, okay? Um, uh, and this is in the same direction. It's from B to B prime with the mapping, just like it is B to B prime here, okay? Um, so um, this is a, a covariant functor. A contravariant functor here is something which has a somewhat different need. Here, in contrast to list and maybe and and this this uh, func this function here, which had these in hand, either directly or after giving an environment variable, we need a, a, a uh, the type variable. We don't have it. We need it. We need an A prime here. Um, and how are we gonna, what are we gonna do with that A prime? Well, look, uh, we need to produce a V here. So we need, a, uh, so this is what we're seeking to implement. Something that, that needs an A prime, will be given an A prime, and somehow we have to get back a V from this. How are we going to do this? Well, Okay, if we're given an A prime, we need a V somehow. Where are we gonna conjure up that from? From whence are we gonna conjure up that? Well, what, what do we have in our hand? Well, um, we have something that, that doesn't take an A prime, but it takes an A and produces a V. Now, if only we could get from this A prime, the starting point for this to the starting point from that, we'd be all set, things would be hunky-dory. Uh, we'd be able to plug in the A prime to this and get a V, but this doesn't take an A prime, it takes an A. So we need something that'll turn an A prime into an A. And that indeed is what is provided with a contravariant functor. We need to provide it with a morphism to lift that goes from in the opposite direction. It goes from an A prime to an A because we were consuming A. So this is like a negative A. We don't have it. We instead need it. Um, so if we just had something here for the morphism went from A to A to A prime, we'd be in a pickle, right? We're given an A prime and it doesn't help if we can map from A's to A primes. We need something that goes from an A prime to an A so we can make use of this. So with a contravariant functor in general, if we want to map uh, from a, a functor of an object A to a functor of an object A prime, we need a morphism um, to be lifted, which goes from A prime to A. It goes in the opposite direction, hence contravariant. Um, we want to go from F of A to F of A prime. We need something that goes from A prime to A. And this reflects the fact that, you know, we can think of the A prime here as kind of like a starting point. This is, we're starting at A prime and we need to get to the starting point of this to make use of it. Uh, to think of it in this term, we're starting at A prime. We need to get to this starting point to make use of it. It's like if there were a bus route, which goes from Place Riel to the airport and uh, we're at home, we need to get to Place Riel to take this bus to the airport. We don't need Place Riel to come to us. We need to get to Place Riel um, to go from our home to the airport. We need to first go to Place Riel and then we can take this bus to the airport. Here we're pre-composing by this function. 
that's in the opposite direction f um, before we're hitting it with this function. In general, f is a morphism and this is a morphism, but we're talking here in the Haas category with things like uh, function functors or, or reader functors or list or maybe functors. So I hope you'll forgive me for speaking in terms of the function. So here, the first three with covariance, we had a B, we need to turn it into a B prime. We had, uh, whether it's for maybe or list or reader, um, by contrast here, we need an A prime and this needs an A to do its job. So we have to get to that point. We have to make, make this out of this. Okay. Now with a profunctor at a broad level, we're, we're doing something kind of similar. Hmm. Um, we have this lifting going on. We have morphism too, and we want to lift them to operate on the functor mapping of these objects. So we have uh, objects uh, here, down here. The functor can hit them and map them. And we want to be able to lift a morphism just as the functor can, can map these objects. We wanted to map this morphism to go from the functor applied to this to the functor applied to that just like we did with list, right? We had these objects here and the functor mapped them and we wanted through mapping this, this morphism, lifting this morphism to be able to map a list of B into a list of B prime or maybe a B into a maybe B prime. That's what lifting does. It generalizes this morphism to operate on this domain. Um, so it is with, with uh, profunctors, we're lifting these to operate on this mapping. But there's several twists here. First of all, we're not just dealing with one object here, we're dealing with a pair of them. Mm. So the profunctor here is not just mapping, it's not just profunctor applied to one object, it's a profunctor applied to this pair. Mm. It's a profunctor applied to this pair. Mm. Um, and by lifting, we need to be able to map profunctor of AB into profunctor of A prime, B prime. But kind of going along with that, we're not just dealing with one morphism down here at the bottom as we were earlier, right? Um, whether it was going in contravariant way or the covariant way, we're dealing with two. And guess what? One goes contravariantly, and one goes covariantly. Mm. One maps A prime to A, and one maps B to B prime. Ah. And we're gonna, when we map it, when we map this morphism, in Haskell, we don't just call it F map, which operates only on a single morphism, single function, whether contravariantly or covariantly, we're gonna map two such morphisms. Count them, F and G. F, the contravariant one is the first argument. G, the covariant one is the second one. Now that your head may be spinning here, but I'd like to, to explicate this. There's some real intuitions you can build up that will help this all make sense. And in fact, make use of reasoning you've used for all of your adult life. Mm. Um, so, Within this context, um, it's nice to think of the profunctor rather than just treating it as something opaque, black box, who knows what it is. It's something that maps, and think of it as something that turns an A into a B, or that makes a B given an A from an A, that so gets to be from A. Mm. So this is ways of turning an A into a B, you could think of it. That's what it kind of summarizes. Later will be, it, at first we might think of it as a possible avenues to get from A to B, um, uh, to turn an A to a B, but later we'll think of it, oh, there'll be opportunities to think about cost or whether we can get, et cetera. Um, 
So this is ways of turning an A into a B, and this will be ways of turning an A prime into a B prime, where A prime is upstream of A. It's kind of earlier. Um, so again, maybe this is our, you know, we want to uh, we want to get from our home to the airport terminal from which our flight will leave. Mm. And how are we going to make use of that? Well, there's a bus which goes from Place Riel to the airport as a whole. And we want to make use of that. So what we need is a way from getting our, from our house to Place Riel, to the starting point of the bus. The, the thing that's consumed, the, the point of departure, the point de départ. Um, and this will bring us to the, uh, to the airport. And then we need to get from the airport to the terminal. Mm -hmm. um, so here we're, we're providing this way of generalizing this in both directions, from an earlier A prime to get to an A, and from a B at the end to get further to a B prime. We saw this earlier with covariance and contravariance. Um, uh, so maybe we want to start with whole eggs and, and fresh cilantro, and we want to produce a Japanese-style sliced omelet with shiracha sauce on it. Um, but all we have is a recipe that will tell us how to make a, a an omelet out of cracked eggs, already shelled eggs, and uh, and sliced clean cilantro. Uh, how are we going to make use of that? Well, we need to turn our whole eggs into cracked eggs, and we need to turn uh, also as a precondition or starting point. We need to turn our fresh cilantro into sliced cilantro. Mm. And having done that, we can then produce uh, a, an omelet using the recipe. But that's not where, that's not all the distance we need to go. Remember, we need to, we want an omelet that needs to be Japanese style sliced with sriracha sauce on it. So how are we gonna do that? We're gonna take that omelet that was produced by the recipe and further slice it up and put sriracha sauce. So one extends it earlier, if the cracked eggs and fresh cilantro that we've got to chop to get the starting point of the recipe. And then the end point of the recipe was just the omelet on a plate and we need to slice it up in Japanese omelet style and put sriracha sauce on it. So here we need, we have this, this um, morphism F that's contravariant and that's from A prime to A. That's taking our whole eggs, cracking them, and, and taking our sliced cilantro, or excuse me, our, our fresh cilantro and slicing it. It's going from A prime to A. Ooh. It's contravariant. It's going in, in the, the opposite direction. We, we have one of these, we have one of these, but this is our starting point. So we, we need a, a mapping this direction for that. But from B to B prime, it's covariant. We just need it to be uh, to, to, to map like this in the same direction. That's covariant. Um, and as you might expect, F is so precomposed. F occurs first. We need to first get to Place Riel before we can leave on the bus to the airport. Uh, or we need to turn our cracked our whole eggs and fresh cilantro into cracked eggs and sliced cilantro. That's that's occurred first. It's pre-appended. Um, then we use this, say, to get to the airport or get our omelet on the plate. And then G is post uh, post composed to occur after that to get us from the airport bus stop to the terminal or to get us from the um, from the whole omelet on a plate to a Japanese style sliced omelet with sriracha sauce. That's the plan. So die map here, this lifting, you know, F map generalized this function to operate on the, uh, uh, in the functor map domain. Die map turns, and, and get this, 
it turns ways of turning an A into a B. Mm, that's this one. Into ways of turning an A prime into a B prime. So given a way of turning an A into a B, we get a way of turning an A prime into a B prime. Given a recipe from cracked eggs and sliced cilantro into an omelet, we get a way of turning whole eggs and fresh cilantro into Japanese style omelet with sriracha sauce. Or given a bus from Place Riel to the airport, we have an uh, entire plan which will go from our home all the way to the terminal at the airport. We just have to get to the starting point of the bus from our current position, that's A prime to A, and then get from the end point of the bus to the terminal to our end point, that's B to B prime. The first is co contravariant, the second is covariant. That's lifting for a profunctor. Um, and the home profunctor is an example. Okay, so um, just watching this, um, I'd like to explicate it a little bit more. So what we're dealing with here is something where, whoa, whoa. Um, if we start unpacking it further, oh, out, out black menu. Um, so uh, to start unpacking this more, um, we're going to need to kind of burrow down for thinking about in a, in a finer grained way beyond the intuitions of, of, of what profunctors are. And profunctors can be seem a bit forbidding at first because they're like mapping the functors from a product category with C opposite into well, set most commonly, or a V category, like a V quantile, um, uh, more generally. Well, um, let's let's take that step by step. That, that's a little bit of a, of a of a of a tough thing to take in at once. So, I'd like to remind you of an opposite category. Here, you know, category C. This is admittedly rather underpopulated, but uh, humor me. This this is a category. So we have objects in red, shown as A, with uh, labels, uh, A, B, C, et cetera. And then we have these morphisms between these objects uh, shown with these labels here. The opposite category has the same objects. That's the same morphism, but they're turned around. They're, they're viewed as going, if, if F in the original category is viewed as going from A to B, and the opposite category goes B to A. We view it as being from B to, to A. It's the same morphisms are just viewed um, in, in the opposite way. But the objects are all the same. It's just the morphisms are flipped consistently across all of them. That's C opposite. Okay? Um, and uh, just as a reminder, we can construct product categories. Um, uh, product category is something we talked about in previous lectures. If we have a category C and D, an object in the product category is a pair of objects, one from C and one from D. Um, the first one being the one from C and the second one being the one from D. Um, but um, uh, there's also morphisms in this product category. And there's a morphism in the product category from um, uh, C comma D to C prime comma D prime in the product category if and only if there's a morphism from C to C prime and C and D to D prime and D. Yeah. Um, uh, so again, I've covered that in previous uh, lectures. Um, uh, hoping that makes sense to people. Um, okay, so burrowing down profunctors, I kind of wave my hand what they built for tried to build up some intuition to avoid this being too forbidding. Um, we've seen previously bifunctors um, as mappings between product categories and another category. A profunctor is, is kind of like a bifunctor, except the first category is flipped. Um, well, I, don't, I don't like how that is phrased actually, because 
profuncturates are not kind of a poor, weird cousin of, of bifunctors. In, in my mind, they're more interesting, richer. Um, bifunctors are used kind of prosaically. Profuncturates are really interesting, give you all sorts of nifty benefits. Um, so let's not think of them as kind of bifunctors poor cousin, but it bears noting they are bifunctors, just a bifunctor from this very particular category. But that peculiarity of that category, the fact that it's opposite makes all the difference. It makes them all the more applicable and, and useful. Um, so at a concrete level though, um, uh, what this, the fact that they are a functor, just like a bifunctor is mapping from this product category into a, a category, so it is with a, with a, with a profunctor. Uh, each pair uh, within this category here, um, profunctor is a mapping from this product category into category V. And, and so each pair of it is mapped into a value in, in V. And V most commonly is set, a set category. But again, we'll, we'll be dealing with these quantile categories that are beautiful, like cost or bool, um, these enriched categories that uh, empower us in, for various types of analysis. And what does this summarize? Well, it summarizes a way of getting from, uh, C, getting from C to D or making a D from a C. We kind of saw that earlier. That was kind of the few intuitions I, um, I gave um, uh, here and, and in, the, um, in, in my opening um, sort of sum, or top, uh, summary of, of, of topics. Um, and a key point here is this weird kind of opposite, which seems idiosyncratic and just sort of like a weird twist or hack. Um, it actually preserves the semantics of wayfinding. It's, it's extraordinarily natural. We do it all the time. When we reason about how to use a recipe and we have different starting ingredients or that are you know more, um, more elemental than the recipe starts with, we know we have to turn those into the elements with which the recipe starts. If we know the bus leaves from Blas Real to the airport, we know we have to get to the bus stop. If we know there's a flight from Calgary to, um, to Seattle, and you know if I really wanna to go to Seattle, which I do, um, I need to get from, uh, from Saskatoon to Calgary and, and then I can take the flight from Calgary to, to Seattle. We use these reasonings all the time and the opposite uh, captures uh, exactly the thinking. Um, it's so natural to us, we don't even realize there's kind of this opposite going on, but, uh, but there is. Um, if we want, if we want to, to go from, uh, you know, to go from uh, Saskatoon, uh, to to Seattle, uh, and uh, so if we have a flight from Calgary to Seattle, we want to go from Saskatoon to Seattle. You might think we need to go from uh, naively Calgary to Saskatoon, but that's not the case. You need to go from Saskatoon to Calgary. Um, so again, it's in the opposite relation, but so it's so so built into our thinking. We it's it's tacit, and we don't break it out explicitly. And profunctors, as I noted, can be considered proof relevant relations um, uh, between these in the sense that they, they're constructive, they provide a, a proof or a summary, a, a demonstration. So at a heuristic level, and this is purely heuristic because the, the categories involved are, are actually, uh, don't, don't take it too seriously, but the idea is, look, if we have a, um, we have a category C, and we have a, um, a hom set um, here between B and C, a kind of canonical profunctor is, is one that is the hom functor. Um, and it will lift, just like any profunctor, two morphisms here shown as F and H. Those are the blue morphisms here. Um, it'll lift those. And the results of lifting those will be to, to allow us to map, instead of just from B to C, to map something 
upstream of B here, A, as the starting point, and downstream of C as the ending point. So what we, oh, well, yeah, that's something, this hum set indicating things from B to C. Here we'll get out something from this pro functor that allows us to reason about the home set from A to D going all this direction. It'll allow us to, to sort of turn ways of turning Bs into Cs into ways of turning As into Ds, where A is upstream of B and D is downstream of C. Mm. Mm. Or given a way of making a, a C from a B, it'll allow us to have a way of making a D from an A, um, where first we'll have to turn an A into a B, and then we'll turn the C into a D later, right? Um, notice there was contravariance there. We're turning this into this A into a B, but we're turning a C into a D. Mm. Um, okay, now, one thing that makes this a little bit confusing is the fact that um, if we're dealing with the Hom pro functor, uh, mapping a particular Hom set to another Hom set using FH, mapping this Hom set BC into the Hom set AD, um, is actually occurring uh, uh, within set here. Um, so this home set is a set. This home set is a, from A to D, is a set. It's in the category set. Mm -hmm. and, and category, in, in category C, cross C, if we have something that goes from A cross B, this is just an object, this is a, product category and an object in the product category is a product of objects from each of the two categories, A from C and B from uh, C. We, we saw that when we defined product categories, right? Objects here are just pairs from each of the categories being, whose product is being taken. Okay, um, so that's C and C, A is from C and B is from C, um, nothing Nothing too fancy here. And then if we have uh, A prime, B prime, also A prime from C and B prime from C. Um, if we have something that maps B to B prime, a morphism like this going sort of, I, I've shown it a, there's actually, uh, yeah, so, so if there's a morphism from B to B prime, and morphism from A prime to A. Uh, here in uh, C cross C, or what we'd see is something like, uh, like this. Um, there actually wouldn't be a morphism uh, directly from A cross B to A prime cross B prime going, going directly, unless there was also one from A to A prime. What we're really interested in is, is these pairs like this. And C up cross C, they look like this, right? We C up is just flipped uh, of C. The morphisms are flipped. The objects are the same. And so this morphism that goes from A prime to A here goes from A to A prime here. It's the same morphism, it's just viewed the other way. Now this, this category, has a link from A prime to, from A cross B to A, A prime cross B prime uh, like this, that's directional. And it has a morphism between these two paired objects. Remember, we have a morphism between these two pair objects. If there's a morphism on each first elements of the pair and the second elements of the pair. Um, and given that, when we map it into set here with a functor, this is a functor. A bi functor is a functor from this product category into set. And so if we map it over, 
this object is mapped to this home set. It's a set, we're in category set. This is some set of happens to get any morphisms. Um, it maps this object, A prime cross B prime, into set. What does it map this morphism into? Well, remember, functors map objects to objects and morphisms to morphisms. Moreover, if they up, if they map object A, object A, object B, excuse me, A to F of A and B to F of B, then they map a morphism from A to B to a morphism between F of A and F of B. Here we are. There you go. Um, it's a morphism from, uh, it's a morphism between sets. In other words, it's a function, a function from this C set to that C set. Mm. Mm. This function maps an, a way of turning A's into B's into a corresponding way of turning an A prime into B prime. It maps a particular bus from Place Riel to the airport into a way of getting from your home to the airport terminal. Uh, and uh, so this is a function maps for each element of this set to one particular element. Here, one element of this set might be that bus going to the airport, uh, airport bus stop from Place Riel. And now you have a particular way of going from your home all the way to the terminal of the airport. Um, okay. And, and, and that would be lifting of these, these functions here. Um, now, you know, if we, if we add this category C up and C, um, if, if we're to diagram this out, we get something god awful looking. Um, it, it, it looks quite horrendous. Um, so uh, we have each product of these objects shown here. Remember, C op has the same objects as C. So it's all these objects. And there's morphisms between these objects uh, if there's a morphism in C op cross C. Uh, excuse me, uh, if, if there's a morphism from the first element of this to the first element of the target, the second element of the source, the second element of the target. Okay. Um, so here, for example, let's let's take um, let's take one that might be a little bit easier to to reason about for a starter. Uh, let's take C cross C. So here we're in this one here, and we're in this one here. Now I'm saying, okay, so, so what is there a morphism to that goes out of that? Well, let's see. In C op, there's this J going to A, okay? Uh, and in C, there's this H going to D. So if we take the product of J and H, the pair of J and H, will map from C, C to A, D. And that's exactly what this is. Mm. Um, or uh, thinking about this uh, a little bit more, um, uh, we might have, we have greater flexibility. Whoa, we have greater flexibility than that. Uh, we might say, want to go from, uh, from CC again, but we have additional options. There's not just J, there's G. So alternatively, we could go from CC to G. Via G, we could go to B. And via H, we could go to D. So CC to B, D. Um, uh, mumble. Um, uh, so that would be uh, this one right here, G via G and via H uh, going to be pair of B and D, okay? Uh, so there's, an, uh, there's a morphism like that. But you'll notice that's not 
all of them. There are these ones kind of written as a sort of funky way with, with uh, ID. What, what are those all about? Well, look, you know, we always know that a given object has at least one morphism to itself, the identity morphism. It may have others, but there's at least one. And if we're at CC, um, in, in C opposite, we don't have to go anywhere. We could just stay there. Um, for the, so that's the first element of the pair. Um, the second element of the pair, we could go via H. And if we did that, this would be a morphism. The pair of those morphisms, I, D, C, and C all, uh, and H, C, would go to C, D. So we'd have something from C, C to C, D, right? Um, and there we go, this morphism. Now, this is C op cross C, and the, it's admittedly rather um, visually displeasing and aesthetically objectionable, um, if not repulsive. Um, and I'm sure there's ways I could prettify it through appropriate uh, care, and probably insightfully so, that some of the, the structure would pop out. But there lies within that within that beast, an element of beauty. Um, so let's put that, take that over here on the right and put it over here. So here we have these, uh, these objects here, we have these morphisms between them. And remember that a pro functor is a mapping from this product category that we've just taken pains to kind of explicate here, it's a mapping to another category, in general category V. But most commonly we're dealing with set. If it, if it doesn't say it's set, okay? I mean, it's, it's the most common one. And for the HOM pro functor, um, in particular, it's a, it's a pro functor from C op cross C to set. In fact, we, we write it, right? C of, C comma B, it's, it's using the notation, it's applying a, a hom functor. So what's the hom functor here? Well, it's mapping from pairs here to the corresponding hom set. So here we go. D cross D is mapped to C, D comma D. C cross C here, this pair of C and C that has been the focus of our, of our attention um, in our efforts the past few minutes. It's mapped over here, and if you go trace the blue, um, you'll get to C comma C here. Um, see that? It's mapped over to the HOM set of, of between C and C in category, you guessed it, C. Um, so this is mapped over to that. And But remember, so, so you just say, well, look, Okay, that's very nice. Like, yeah. Um, so the functor maps. <laughs> yeah, it maps. Okay, what about it? Well, remember, functors are functorial. So they map more than objects. They map, they map morphisms. So each of these morphisms here that we laboriously labeled in the wee hours of the morning. Um, those get mapped over into morphisms in this category to the left. And again, that may leave you non plus, but, but, but what are morphisms over here on the left? What is this category on the left? What category lies before us? It's the category of none other than set. And morphisms and set are none other than functions. These ladies and gentlemen, are nothing more or less than functions between HOM sets that take a given HOM set and assign to it another HOM set. Okay, now the plot thickens because remember earlier I said that heuristically uh, the HOM pro functor lifting it on like F and H map and map the set C comma. B comma C 
into the set C comma A comma D. It mapped from one hum set to another. Given a given way of turning a B into a C, given an element of this set, we got a particular way of turning an A into a D. Indeed. Um, so given a particular way of getting from class rail to the airport, you now have a particular way of getting from your home to the particular airport terminal in which you're interested. Uh, okay, so that's what these morphisms are. So let, let's take a look at, at BC here, okay? Um, not the university um, and not the period of time, but uh, this particular object. So in the product category here, we have BC. Um, and you'll notice that through the same process we laboriously illustrated, uh, BC has, uh, if we have B come a C, it has some outgoing arrows uh, to it. One of them goes from B to A with F, okay, and uh, it's B comma C. So another one goes from C to, well, uh, yeah, H to D. So there's one from BC here and it goes over to A, D. And I'm kind of searching for it visually. There it is. It's, it's, it's the long arrow um, from BC to AD. And, um, Done, like this. We're dealing here with the category C op cross C here. Um, I'm just mechanically kind of reading out where you can get to via various pairs. This is via F cross H. You can get from B here, via F to A, and from C here, second element of the pair, hey, we can get to D get to A comma D, or the pair B, C, we can get to the pair A, D. Okay, and so when we have this here and we map that arrow over into set, we get a mapping between home functors that takes something, a particular element from B, C, like a way to get from Place Riel to the airport um, bus stop, and that turns it into something from your home to the airport terminal you want to take. That's the D. That's further downstream of C. You have to go from the airport bus stop to the, to the terminal. Um, so this morphism turns into a mapping between these sets. And what mapping is it? Well, it's the mapping if you lift the Hom functor with F and H. And that's exactly what this was. You're lifting it with F here and H here. You're mapping from this Hom set into this Hom set. What a thing of beauty. And that allows us, it's, it's this lifting of the, of the pair of F and H that allows us to turn a BC into a, 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 an element of the hum set of BC into an element of the hum set of uh, A comma D. Okay, that's that's what uh, that's what that is. So this is given a particular element of BC. It turns into of, of the excuse me of, of the uh, hum set between B and C. It turns it into a particular element of the hum set between A and D. Okay, so where's this all going? Why are we engaged in this? Um, well, um, uh, beyond the aesthetic affront and the conceptual pleasure um, attendant to it, this is going to set us up for building these profuncture collages. And this is quite hand wavy, and so don't take this seriously right now. But the, the idea here, this says montage instead of collage. Um, I'm admittedly rather innocent of the distinction between them. Um, but here, for example, we can reason about uh, the relationship from, from C to C in this, uh, in this manner and actually arrive at 
uh, instead of just viewing this kind of in the assembly language of this as a mapping from C op cross C to set, we can actually instead think of the profunctor as kind of a, a relation from one category to another from, from the two parts of this, but without the op, C into C here, okay? And this will allow us to kind of reason in a kind of wayfinding way about like how to get from A to a D. And a collage ends up mapping, constructing these relations between these two categories. Um, you may remember that I had talked about the profunctor as allowing you to view it as a um, kind of a, a relation between two categories, C here and D here, let's say in general. We're dealing with, with this one right now, but C and D. And this collage supports this kind of thinking. We're, we're dealing with the profunctor as kind of a bridge between these two categories where the, there are these mappings between these categories which are associated with uh, particular elements. Um, we might also think of it, uh, these profunctors, as not just being associated with set, but with an arbitrary category V. And here the notion is that for each element uh, of this, instead of just mapping to set, we're mapping to a category V. And so instead of this being a set, maybe it's a true or false. There is a path or there's no path. Or maybe it's a cost. It's a real number indicating cost. Maybe it's a non-negative number indicating cost. Um, so here, instead of mapping the set, we could think of it as mapping to another category. And conceptually, we can think of that as kind of labeling the edges between these. Here, we're, we are dealing with set, though this may have to be revised. Here, we're dealing with Boolean. Is there a link from A to A, for example? Is there a link from A to C? Um, and, uh, and, and this allows us to kind of reason, can we get from an A to a D? Uh, we, we have these linkages for each thing um, that we can get to from a B. We can get to a B or we can get to a C here. And by constructing a collage like this, we can actually reason in an intuitive way about the covariance without even realizing it. So to go from an A to a D, you can kind of go along here in this part of the collage say from an A to a B, then bridge over to a C and then go down to a D. Alternatively, we could bridge over earlier and then we could go down here and, and come across. And all those would be, um, would be valid ways of crossing over. We could go over A, B, C here, cross over there and then down, for example. Um, uh, these would be different ways of arriving at going, producing a D from an A. We could do it in several different ways with several different types of lifting going on, okay? Um, uh, lifting FH, but we could potentially lift, um, for example, uh, as the first element, uh, we could lift uh, G after F, mm, uh, and we could reason about how this maps the home set between C and D. Uh, and, and by the way, identity on D is H, and we could reason about how this lifts the, the home set from C to D uh, into something that's a home set from A to D, for example. Um, so these collages support this, and and they support reasoning about cost, for example, where we're reasoning about the cost of, of, of travel uh, between uh, 
uh, between these different points. Uh, and by so doing, we can actually end up uh, defining kind of uh, ways of reasoning about how that cost changes as we're considering different, um, different pairs of, of paths, et cetera. How does this all come through in, in Haskell? Well, uh, DIMAP and Haskell I spoke of earlier. This lifts not one function, but two functions. You may, uh, you may remember it here. Um, DIMAP lifts two functions here. To map from a base of turning A's into B's as the profuncture of A comma B into ways of turning A primes into B primes. Um, uh, and we, we perform that mapping with DIMAP just as before we, lifted F to operate on this or to go from say a list of B to a list of B prime. So it is where we're mapping these profunctors. So how do we how do we declare that? Well it takes it takes to these two functions F and G and it maps a PAB into a PA prime B prime. Great, but you'll notice it's to be emphasized that F is contravariant. And this harks back to, and I'll forgive me for showing that earlier slide, um, F is contravariant here. It goes in the opposite direction. It goes from A, B to A prime, B prime, okay? Um, okay, so for next time, uh, what I'd like you to, to watch are following videos. The first three are, most important and actually the second and third are the most important. Um, uh, that's gonna uh, address the heart of what we're we'll talking about. Um, but uh, for those who have um, forgotten about pre-orders, joins and meets, uh, I strongly advise the, the first of these as well. Uh, we will then be building on it. I, I wave my hands a great deal and talk about this stuff, but we are building on this to talk about profunctors uh, as applied in these V categories for reasoning about these labeled edges. Um, uh, and that will be probably this coming Monday, two lectures from now, um, possibly as late as uh, this coming Wednesday. Okay, uh, so that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. And I look forward to seeing you at the next session of the class. Hopefully this material offers some interest and some utility. Thanks so much. Take care there.